guys, how's it going? Today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how to design a deer proof garden and my favorite deer repellents. I use deer repellents all the time in my New Jersey zone 6A garden. I have to, we get herds of deer in my neighborhood. They will decimate my plants if I don't. As gardeners, we wanna plant whatever we want and we don't wanna be limited by deer, right? I know I don't, I wanna grow hostas. I wanna grow tulips. And so there are ways to grow those items even if you have deer. For starters, it's really important to plant smart. And what does that mean, planting smart? Well, Rutgers Cooperative Extension put out a list of plants rated by deer resistance. I'm talking annuals, perennials, shrubs, you name it, they listed it. And it's broken out and rated by deer resistance from low to high. That is my Bible whenever I go to the nursery. I'm gonna link it here in the comments um, because I think it's really important and helpful even if you don't live in New Jersey like I do. And armed with that knowledge, you can then plant in combinations. I like to plant high, highly resistant plants with low resistant plants. And that I find kind of helps with keeping the deer at bay. So what we want to do as gardeners is make our gardens less palatable as possible. We want to put plants in that they don't like, we want to make them taste bad, and we want to make it harder for them to want to eat our plants. With Planting Smart, I also like to plant in combinations. So I'll combine, you know, low level resistant plants like a hosta or, um, or tulips with something like you know, cat mint or, uh, you know, one that has a higher resistance. And so like, for example, if I, if I plant cat mint in the front of my border and plant roses behind it, which deer, they, they tend, they, they like to eat here. Um, that also acts as a deterrent to keep them away because they go up to the cat mint, they smell the cat mint, and then hopefully they decide they don't want to go in any further. Now, is it a foolproof strategy? No, because deer will eat through anything. They will eat anything they want. Another method that um, doesn't really work for me, uh, it, I find it works initially, but then uh, I found that over time, the deer learn the patterns, are those motion sensor scare tactic devices. Some are like water guns or they make a sound and scare them off. Now, initially I found that they work, but over time the deer learn the patterns and for me, it, it wasn't an effective strategy. If it's an effective strategy for you though, I would love to hear about it because maybe there's a new product on the market that I don't know about and I'm all about it. Another great strategy for keeping deer out of your garden and away from your plants is dogs. Now when dogs are outside, they're barking, running around, uh, you know, deer will tend to stay away just because they don't want to go and bother with the dogs. Uh, but when the dogs are inside, they'll, they'll come graze the yard. I mean, I have two black labs and I was hoping that that would be a good deterrent, you know, cause they're in my yard, that's their bathroom. And you know, that really does not seem to thwart the deer. Although the deer will not come in my yard if the dogs are outside. They'll go in my neighbor's yard. I'll see them walking around, but they will not come in my yard because the dogs bark at them. So they can be an effective deterrent, but again, unless they're outside all the time, which they're not. So it might not be the best sole strategy to use, but good to use in combination with other things. But one of the best ways to really keep deer out of your garden is by erecting an eight foot fence. Now I know some of you have a six foot fence and you say that works, that's awesome. Deer though can jump like eight feet. So if you want to really keep them out, you need eight feet if you're building one. If you already have one up like I do, like I have a split reel fence going around my back border, which does not go anywhere near <laughs> eight feet high. So they'll jump over my fence. So it really doesn't keep them out. Uh, but something to keep in mind is that deer lack depth perception. So if you already have a fence up and it's um, lower like mine is, you can actually erect a second fence next to that and they won't jump it. I'm gonna give you an example. I have a garden outside of my shed. You've probably seen it. I call it the cutting garden. 
well that garden's been there for about 15 years it used to house my vegetables and we have a small fence uh, going around that bed and it's right next to my split rail fence now through the years I've definitely had deer come in my backyard and eat plants they have never 100% ever jumped in that bed and I believe it is because of the double fencing system so it's just something to think about um, when you're you know thinking about your deer strategies you can try a dual fence type system and finally one of the last strategies that I swear by and I have been using for years and I I have honed it I have honed this strategy this two prong repellent method is really working for me right now and I'm, I'm gonna share it with you so number one for years I have been trying all kinds of repellents I'm I want to try everything and see what works for me I find that most repellents are really stinky and the nozzle clogs when I first uh, tried using deer out which is what I'm using here. Um, it has like a minty odor and the nozzle doesn't clog, which I really like, and the deer don't eat through it. So uh, for me, this repellent works really well. I've, I've been using it for years. New to my garden this year, I wanted to try this granular called Deer Scram. And I'm gonna show it to you now. Um, I apply this around the perimeter of my yard. Uh, my yard is about half an acre, so uh, it's a, a bucket really does that for me. If you have a larger uh, yard, you know, just put it around the perimeter of your garden. And I have really found uh, that using this two-prong strategy of a perimeter repellent as well as actually spraying the plants has shown that the deer have been leaving my plants totally alone. I have not even seen a nibble all summer with the exception of after we had like days and days and days of rain, like I'm talking days, and I probably should have reapplied the spray repellent and the granule. I probably should have reapplied both sooner than I did. And I did notice some nibbles. So um, when, that's a really good thing to keep in mind. When it rains, you're gonna wanna reapply more often because it does wash away. So to give you my strategy on how I use the repellents, uh, for starters, in early spring, I'm talking like before anything even breaks ground, I buy my repellents. And I buy them online, and I'm gonna tell you why I buy them online. I buy them online because it's easier. <laughs> it's easier to remember. Whenever I tell myself, oh, you know, next time I'm out, I'll stop at the nursery, I'll go get it, I, I forget and never do. Because it's winter here, it's cold, you know, I'm not really in the gardening mode. Some nurseries aren't even open yet, so quite frankly, it's easier to order it online and just be ready. And you want to be ready because as soon as those plants that are susceptible break ground, you want to start spraying them. So I'm going to use tulips as an example because the deer are insane with tulips around here. Maybe they're just as insane around you with them, but they're really insane here. Um, so as soon as those tulips break ground, like as soon as they're like maybe that much out of the ground, I will spray them. And then when they're about halfway tall, uh, halfway to their height of maturity, I will spray them again. And then when they uh, are about full grown and they get that beautiful flower head just before it blooms, I will spray that again and then once it blooms I spray it one last time to ensure that the deer will leave it alone. I've been doing this for the last few years and it has worked really really well for me. If I miss spraying those deer will come in and eat them so it's just that's that's what works for me. Now uh, I do the same thing with hostas as soon as they break down as soon as they break ground I will spray them and then as soon as they're about halfway high, spray them again. And then when they fully leaf out, I spray them again and then, and then do like about a monthly spray thereafter. Um, if it rains, again, you're gonna wanna spray a little bit more often, but uh, in general, that's, that's, that's kinda how I do it. Now, if you live in an area where the deer are just so aggressive, like you have herds of deer sleeping in your yard, I would recommend applying the repellents more often than once a month. Um, I would maybe even go every other week. 
And then um, in spring, what I do, and I do this here, is I go more often on my spraying just because I want to teach the deer that they don't like the taste of my gardens. Now, this really does work for an extended period of time, but I have noticed that if I get lazy about my repellents, they start visiting my yard and they will decimate my plants. So I really try to be good about it. And if you follow me, I will remind you <laughs> to, to spray those plants and put down your repellents because it is on my mind and I remind myself and because I do that, my gardens have remained intact. I still haven't figured out groundhog yet. Uh, and if you have a good groundhog technique, please tell me in the comments because <laughs> I don't have a good one. Uh, but the deer, I, I, I feel as though I've mastered. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. If you try any of these tactics, let me know. If you use a particular repellent or a device, I would love to hear about it in the comments, especially if it's new to me. I'm all about learning something new and maybe what you're using is better than what I'm doing. Um, but uh, please share it below. I'm gonna link both products that I use in the comments as well as a list of my favorite deer resistant plants because I have a bunch of them planted in my garden. And again, I'll also link the uh, Rutgers Cooperative Extensions fact sheet on plants rated by deer resistant because that's an important one, you need that. Uh, and even if you're not in New Jersey, it will apply to you because it'll just give you an idea of what they love and what they don't. Once you check out this list, you'll see why. Um, but anyway, I hope you got a lot from this video today. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really appreciate you joining me in the garden today. Enjoy a beautiful day.